Welcome back, it's Tuesday, it's time for another tutorial. Today I wanna to show you my workflow of editing concert photos. So let's get started. Now shooting a concert can be really fun. It's awesome to be able to shoot your favorite band as they perform live right here on stage in front of you. With all the lights going off, the crowds cheering, it's an awesome experience. Once you step into the photographer's pit, which is right in front between the, the stage and the crowd, it's a, it's a small little narrow passageway and you have to compete with five other photographers and videographers for a spot to try and get the best shots. And with the crowd behind you and the band in front of you, photographers on either side of you, it can get really, really crazy. Concert venues can be quite dark. So the important thing is to invest in gear that's gonna allow you to shoot handheld and bring in the maximum amount of light. Now, starting off with cameras, it's important to look at the autofocus speed, the high ISO noise, and your burst rate. How many frames per second does your camera shoot? What's the maximum ISO level that you can go without getting too much noise in? It's also highly advisable to use autofocus instead of manual focus in a concert environment your subjects gonna be moving and jumping and doing flips and whatnot all around you on stage it'll be really difficult to track them and to use manual focus at the same time so for this environment autofocus is most likely to go to using an aperture of about 1.4 to 1.8 to 2.8 will help you a lot with keeping the high ISO down and you'll have less noise in your images Make sure you pack in a few batteries in case you shoot a lot. You don't want to be running out of power halfway through. Pack in a few memory cards. Get yourself a small backpack that you can leave onto your back at all times because the space is limited and you're going to be bumping into a lot of people all the time shooting and running around the pit to try and get those images. Now you've finished shooting all your images, you're back home, you've dumped your cards and you're about to start the editing process. So let's head up to my computer and I'll show you how I edit my concert photographs. Okay, so we've got this image opened up in Camera Raw. Uh, it's a shot I took of Iron Maiden a few years back. And um, we're just gonna look what we can do to this image to bring out the best of it. So offhand, you can see this shot is very, very blue, uh, just with the, the blue lights hitting stage. So we're just gonna go over to our temperature slide over here and just introduce a bit more yellow. And immediately you can see it's it's popping. Um, we've got some purples over there, some yellow lights, and blue is still there. And it just looks a bit better. The skin tones look a bit better. Next up, um, look at his face here. Let's see, maybe we can just drop the exposure just a tad. Bring up a bit of contrast. Uh, see if we can isolate those highlights a little bit more. Introduce some more detail in the shadows there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Add a bit of texture, a bit of clarity, a bit of dehazing. And just bring in some vibrance. Awesome. And then I'm just gonna create a gentle little S curve here. Introduce a bit more contrast. Just like that. Now I'm just gonna move over here. We've got a bit of noise because you can see I've shot at ISO 800, at f.2 on my 1635, at 640th of a second. So the motion is pretty frozen, it's great. Um, but I just wanna get rid of the majority of noise here without losing too much detail in the skin. So, and just add a bit of color noise in case. Go over to my lens corrections here and just click on this remove chromatic aberrations because more often than not in this high contrast environment you'll have a bit of chromatic aberration around uh, figures like this especially if it's backlit and even there you can see there's still a little bit remaining there just to kind of combat the majority of chromatic aberration i always just leave that switched on um, then we can go over to our manual over here and just introduce a bit of vignetting just to keep the focus on this lead singer over here. I think I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm just going to open it up in Photoshop and just see what else I can do to it. Okay, cool. So we've, we've got this image opened up in Photoshop. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to head over to my adjustment layers over here. And I'm just gonna introduce a selective color layer 
and I just want to make these colors really stand out, really pop. All right, so there we go. Let's just look at the before and after. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Next up, I'm going to introduce a bit more of a stylized look. And I do this by adding just a bunch of color lookup tables. Uh, I'm just gonna duplicate these a couple of times and uh, go over to my first one and drop in a horror blue three strip uh, edgy amber four colors uh, soft warming and lastly a futuristic bleak and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop these down to about 20% each All right, there we go. We've got a bit more of a stylistic look now set up. And I'm just gonna select all these layers and put them in a group and just call this look. Let's just look at the before and after. As you can see, it's muted a bit of the tones, which I quite like. It's, we still got the purples and the blues, but it just feels a bit more like a filmic kind of gray, which I quite like. So once we're done with that, we can then go over and just add some sharpening to this. It's just a high pass filter really, and just drop the opacity down to about 60. So it's not too, not too rough. Let's make it a little bit less, 40 maybe. That's good. All right. And uh, I'm pretty happy at this point. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate my background layer and it's always imported as a smart object just because I like to go back sometimes and change things in camera raw once I double click on that. But right now it's not necessary anymore. And this one we're going to call a motion blur. Now on this image, we're just gonna go down to radial blur, actually, it's not motion blur so much, and just make sure it's on spin, best quality, and about an amount of 10. And uh, I think my midpoint's around there, hopefully. I wish Photoshop could introduce a actual preview of the image in this little block instead of just kind of making me guess where the center point of this radial blur would be. Go ahead and click OK. And you can see it's a little bit off. So I'm just going to go ahead and redo that radial blur. And by process of elimination, hopefully I'll get it done soon. Cool. Pretty happy with that. Uh, we got it done. And um, just I feel it's a little bit too much. We can maybe just bring down the opacity a little bit. Sort of, yeah, I think. Yeah, that's better. Just subtlety. Subtlety is always good. So yeah, at this point, I'm pretty happy with the way it came out. I don't think we need to change anything else. So I'll just go ahead and save this as a PNG or JPEG and uh, upload it to my website. Great stuff, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, press that like button. Please subscribe to my channel. Press the little bell. You'll get notifications every time I upload another video. And I'll check you in the next one.